Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beers for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna build the mounting points for the rear subframe, and then we're gonna mount the rear subframe. I know you guys have heard that before. I don't know, I don't know how that happened. But today, I think we're gonna get it done. Stay tuned. So when we were working yesterday, we didn't have the exact right metal supplies to build what we wanted to build. And rather than try and do it wrong or make it work with what we had, I wanted to take the extra time and get the right supplies. So we're back at the metal store. I'm gonna pick up some supplies and then we're gonna head back to the shop. All right guys, we are back in the shop. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. This episode is proudly sponsored by Squarespace. Now you guys know I have a background in computer software engineering, design, and other things like that. And I highly, highly recommend using Squarespace to create your own website. I had customers and different people all the time always asking me, and still to this day, I have people ask me, you know, what should I do to get a website? And I always say, go directly towards Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning designs and templates. So you hop on there and you find something that kind of fits the right feel for the thing you're trying to create that you like the look of way better than like hiring a designer and kicking back and forth designs all day long. You just pick something that you already like the look of and then you modify it to fit your business model and what you want to do. If you need a store or you need something else that's more informational, it has everything. Total flexibility and it's so easy to use. If you can create an email, if you can write an email to somebody, if you can drag and drop photos, you can use Squarespace. It's super, super simple. There's no patching, there's no upgrading, there's no installing of software. And then when you get done and you see that thing on your screen and you like the look of it, you know that that's also gonna look the same to people on mobile devices, iPads, phones, you know, uh, Windows, Mac, all that stuff. You get a good quality cross-browser compatible website out of it. Those things back in the day used to cost a fortune and take forever to develop. And I know, because I used to do it. I, I stand by Squarespace so much that after five years of managing my mom's company website, I said like, that's it, enough is enough. And we got on Squarespace two or three years ago and we've been very happy customers of there ever since then of theirs ever since then. So I can't say enough good things about it. Guys, if you wanna try it out, I highly recommend it. Go to squarespace.com slash bees for build for your free trial and 10% off your first purchase. I will put a link in the description. Check it out. It is a great resource for all sorts of people, musicians, artists, if you wanna like sell some artwork or you're a writer, anything. Anybody out there that wants a website, it's a great resource. Check it out. Huge thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Now. Let's get down to work. If we're gonna get the amount of work done that I want to today, I'm gonna need to bust out my secret weapon, the plasma cutter. And to do that, I'm gonna need to put it together. I don't exactly think that's the best location for it, but we've got ourselves a plasma cutter in the shop now. I wrote my name in metal. It's uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to control, but using a guide and some other things, we should be able to do some damage and speed up our work process a little bit because using the cutoff wheel for everything is not really the best way to do it. And it should be able to, if it, if the if the paperwork doesn't lie, should be able to cut through anything uh, thick as far as thickness wise, anything that we need to use for this build, it should be able to cut through it. Quarter inch steel. No problem. So I'm excited. Now let me figure out what's next. The next step kind of sucks actually. We need to get this thing 100% level on both sides. So we need to get it square with the chassis on both sides. If it's not, then the rear wheels will be kind of cocked the wrong way and the back of the car will be walking out the entire time. So this is, this is one of those moments in the car where if we screw this up, it just, it will ruin the car. So to do that, I've got a long complicated thing that I'm not even gonna explain, but I've got a game plan. I'll show you guys when I'm done. But basically what I'm gonna be doing is measuring that side and that side and making sure they're 100% equal. And once we have that, all 100% equal. I'm just going to temporarily mount that whole structure in there and then we can start building the mounts uh, that will come off of the frame rails uh, that the subframe can mount up to. I can honestly say I've never measured more than that in my entire life, but it was 
So it was for a good cause. So what I did here was I took these uh, pieces of pipe that fit exactly in these holes right here and I, I ran them perfectly straight up and down using the level and then I went ahead and did that all the way around, welded them in there and then I measured between the pipe and the frame rail and the pipe and the seam and stuff like that to make sure that we are exactly centered. Now the second piece of this to verify kind of our measurements is when I build the mounts that come off of the frame rail. So this is where we need to support the subframe. So the mount will come off of the frame rail right here. It'll come down to right here and it'll mount. I'll build mirrored ones so they're the exact same. They have the exact same hole, the distance, uh, the same distance away from the frame rail. And then if you do that on both sides uh, and then tack them in there, if the subframe fits, then you know it's spaced equally. So it's, it's like doing it double duty. So that's the next thing I need to do. I need to start designing my mounts and to do that I'm going to need to get these posts out of here. So I'm going to come in with the uh, cutoff wheel, cut those out of there so they're free and then I'll start measuring and designing my, uh, my mounts that are going to come off the frame rail. Okay, I've come up with the design I think is gonna take absolutely forever to build, but I think once I finish it, it's gonna be really cool. So I have this uh, box rail right here that's nice and hefty. It's got a nice wall thickness that can be used for these mounts. I also have these discs right here, quarter inch thick steel uh, discs, and these are meant to be the thing that the subframe actually bolts up into. So on the top of this, there will be a nut, and then we need a box that goes over this to connect to the frame rail. So these things can sit on here, but not before we put another plate, you know, capping this off. This will have to be capped off, and then that'll be welded on there. It'll help distribute the force uh, across there. So my idea is I have exactly, as long as I don't screw up on any of these pieces, I have exactly enough of this box rail to build a, uh, a post coming out of this and sunk into this frame rail, uh, and then level with the uh, top of the frame rail, which is kind of arbitrary anyways, but it'll look better. Uh, I should have exactly enough to do that. So it's five inches tall, one here in the front and the back, and then a seven inch tall one right there, which makes 24 inches, which is exactly how tall that is. So I'm gonna start cutting. I'm gonna start by cutting a five inch uh, piece of this and uh, tack welding a lot of things up. And then eventually I'll have it sitting kind of right here and I'll be able to make my marks of where we're gonna need to cut. And then we will cut the side out of it so it can essentially slot over. So the box will be sitting right on top of this disc, wherever it needs to live, like that, sunk into the railing right there, and then we'll be able to weld it all the way around. It'll get, a, it'll get underneath the railing, it'll get it beside the railing, and uh, on top flush. So it'll look really nice. It'll be very, very strong, and uh, it'll be pretty cool. I just can't mess up. The uh, slow and steady game plan is playing out here with quite quite slow and quite steady. Uh, it learned some interesting things. So the plasma cutter um, is introducing some sort of contaminants into the cuts. So anytime I'm welding where we use a plasma cutter, it's it's got a little bit of contamination in it. But also just. I'm not gonna be able to get really clean cuts with that thing. I don't know if other people with different plasma cutters can pull that off, but for me, the cut, the, the type of clean cut that I want, I can get from the cutoff wheel. Oh my God, what is, oh no, all of that oil spilled everywhere. I'm glad I didn't catch it on fire. Um, anyways, the type of cut I can get with the cutoff wheel is much better, so that's what I'm gonna go with. It's much more precise. But we got this thing going. So uh, if you guys saw that, on the back side we have a nut um, that, that uh, is the right size nut for this bolt here. This is the um, bolt that obviously goes through the uh, rear subframe. And then we have this plate here that will get welded onto that square and then we have that big plate right there. So um, that is the game plan. So that goes, that goes upside, oh God. That's I thought that would be less hot. Anyways, this goes upside down and the circular part sit smack dab in the middle of this and then we notch it out to go inside here. So once that cools down a little bit, 
uh, I'll start doing the measurements to figure out, well, it's, it's really easy, you don't even have to measure. We just set this on top of this, and then um, we uh, mark out where we want to cut to notch it out so it can slide into the frame row. All right, the first of our rear subframe mounts is uh, pretty much complete. I mean, minus some, minus some welding. But here's what it looks like, and you can see when you look down, you'll see the nut in there, and then the whole straight through the bottom mounting piece. Uh, on the bottom, we have our circular thing. If anybody's wondering why we went with this circular gapped piece, it's because if you look over there on the subframe, it's actually got circular things that it wants you to mount into. If you did a square, it would end up hitting those rubber bushings that you don't want to hit. Uh, so, anyways, and you can see that it's all notched to match the frame rail. So it goes in, slides over till it's nice and snug there, and that's how it matches up. And uh, so once we weld here, here, and then the really important one is, is uh, the one that's underneath the frame rail actually, where this slides in underneath the frame rail. Once we weld that up, we'll have a lot of really good structural stability, I believe. And then we can weld a nice flush plate over two pieces of this, which will be really cool as well. So there's some welding to be done, but first we gotta tack it and test fit the subframe. Uh, so like I said earlier too, rather than um, building the second one of these from scratch, we'll go ahead and start to build a mirrored one of these. That way when we have two of these that are equally the same on both sides, uh, if they match up with the subframe, then we'll know that we have a equal distance um, left to right on the rear. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and start building another one of these. Getting pretty close, we gotta take a break to let this thing cool down. I wanted to show off, I'm getting a little bit better at the welding here. These welds are not in focus at all. There they are. Getting a little bit better. Uh, this new machine definitely, definitely is easier to use and I'm getting a lot less uh, corrosion in there. So, um, now these are just tack welds. This is like, you know, I'm basically welding this in case I have to rip it back apart again. It'll be, everything will be all fully, fully welded up once we ensure that the subframe can fit. So I'll let this uh, cool down and then we're gonna go ahead and be measuring our other one against it and make our cuts. I was reading the comments about today's episode that just dropped while I've been working here in the shop while this piece is cooling down and we've kind of got a big problem in our comment community. We've got too many people that are not watching all the episodes or they're skipping through the episodes and then they're coming in and commenting like they know everything that's going wrong or everything that's going on. And I don't have the time while I'm in here working all day long to respond to comments. But let me just say like this one thing. I made pretty much a whole good old chunk about an episode explaining what's wrong with the midsection of these frame rails and how we're gonna change that and what the game plan is. So please, if you want the long explanation, just go back and watch the one where, I think it's titled something like, well, I guess it wasn't that easy or something. The idea of it is, is that this middle section needs to dive down and it will, but we're keeping it straight for now because it allows us to keep the two front frame rails exactly parallel to the rear frame rails. That is very, very, very important. Until we have the body off of the dots and we don't know how far down that midsection goes. So since I already had this here, it was cool to keep building off of it. That's why we did things like weld that support in the middle where it clearly can't go in the long run. So we will be modifying these frame rails. They're gonna go down from here, over like that, and back up to meet up with the front ones. It's not a problem, it's not a big problem. It's actually, I mean, it is a mistake that I made, but it's actually kind of handy because it allows us to keep everything 100% square and parallel and keep those front frame rails and engine mounts so we can test mount the engine and everything exactly square up and parallel with our rear um, right off the bat. So although it's not exactly right and it's not how it's supposed to do it, it, did, it does work. So anyways, if you guys are like avid viewers of the channel, maybe you don't comment that much or whatever, like please, like the comment section is getting a little out of control. So if, if you feel 
if you see a lot of people like making a lot of comments about things that I've already addressed, please just jump in there and be like, dude, he's already talked about this because it's, it's just kind of, it's getting overwhelming to be honest with you. And it gets negative. It gets everything negative. And it's like, wait, we've already addressed that. We have a game plan moving forward. Like, let's not be negative about this. This is a crazy journey of doing something that's really, really difficult to do. And anytime you go and do that, like if you go back and look at the comments in the Lotus Evora, like I purposely left those comments to prove those people wrong. And then you go back a year and a half later and they're like people go back and delete their comments and other things like that. But anytime you're trying to do something really awesome, there's gonna be people that are gonna try and bring you down a notch because they're not out there trying to do anything. But I just don't want my comment section to be a negative place. That's not what the, the, the channel does best and we all have more fun when things stay positive. But if that means doing the same, you know, paint and wide body cars over and over and over again. That's not, that's not what this channel is about. We gotta be challenging ourselves and trying harder things, et cetera, et cetera. Now I went on a rant and this episode's gonna be too much talking, not enough working. Back to work, let's cut that bitch. And there we have our second subframe mounting point. This is gonna look really cool once we have the third and the fourth and then the strut tower coming up over here on top of this stuff. I think it'll all kind of come together and look really nice. Now, like I said, these are only tack welded together. I mean, they're, they're a little bit more than tack welded, only tack welded in some spots. So we're obviously gonna have to TIG weld the whole thing all the way around, zip it around, and then come in with a flap wheel and clean everything up. And then uh, paint the inside of it so it doesn't rust on the inside and then we'll box it off. That uh, protective eyewear leaves some interesting marks on the old face. So I was thinking about how long this is all taking and I think tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up. I think a couple of you guys would like to see kind of a change of pace. So we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna get outside of the shop because I got about two to three really nice days of weather that I can look forward to before the rain comes back. So we're gonna start stripping down the Datsun because the very next step after we get that mounting, these mounting points done is we need the Datsun body in here right away. So I'm gonna start doing that. Give us a little uh, change of scenery a little bit. And um, you know, I was thinking about how long this is taking and it is completely acceptable because fabrication wise, the, the really nitty gritty, like very, very down to the minutia uh, fabrication measurements and everything, as far as what we need to build and how important it is, this is the most important, hardest thing to build on the entire build is figuring out the mounting points for this rear subframe. Because when you think about the front rails, it's just uh, drilling out holes in a precise spot and then reinforcing them. That's it, and then bolts go straight into the front frame rail. The rear frame rail, we're obviously building out a little bit and you have all the change in elevation and everything. It's a lot more work. So uh, I'm perfectly fine with it taking more time and it going a little bit slower than, it, than, I, than I originally projected, but that, that's completely fine. Uh, it's very, very important. So, but yeah, tomorrow's episode, I'm gonna jump into that dots and I'm super anxious to start tearing that thing apart and we're basically going to harvest the body from it and all the fenders and the hood and all that good stuff. So it should be a lot of fun to work on a car that's much older than me. Thanks so much to our sponsor, Squarespace. Guys, check it out. Go to uh, squarespace.com slash BS for build. There's a link in the description and you will get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. And also, if you want to help out BS for build head over to our website, BS4Build.com, and uh, picking any of the merchandise up goes directly towards helping us buy more metal for this thing. And uh, if you want to find us in more places, BS for build on Instagram, BS for build on Facebook. I will see you guys on there, and I will see you tomorrow when we work on the Datsun. Peace! <laughs>